preparing to live stream. We are now live streaming. Thank you very much. Good evening, members. Good evening, members of the public that have joined us, if any. Uh, good evening, officers. Welcome to the Planning Applications Committee for the 16th of July. Uh, firstly, are there any apologies? Um, thank you, Chair. There are no apologies. Uh, we won't do the minutes tonight, members. Thanks to the um, deliberate error, but the minutes we'll pick up uh, on another occasion. Uh, declarations we will deal with on each item, which takes us through to the uh, first and only item for tonight, uh, which is on page three of the agenda, 134136 London Road, Bagshot. Are there any declarations to make on this item? Councillor White. Only that I've been contacted by many members of the public um, putting their points of view forward. Can you speak up, Councillor White, when you speak next? Because it's difficult to hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, no other declarations? I haven't seen anybody indicate. So, no. Uh, Mr. Callahan, please. Chair, can we just wait, potentially wait one or two minutes more for um, Councillor Dugan? To, uh, Is he trying to get in? Yes, he's here now. Is he? Yep. Brilliant. Oh, he's going to appear in a second. Right. Okay. He's got his camera off. You ready? Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Yeah. Wait one second. Okay. Off you go. Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. Uh, firstly, uh, refer you to the update, please. Um, just clarifies the provision and layout of bin and cycle storage and the affordable housing provision. Wait, just give me one second, boss. Ready, Beth? I'll just go once more via different means. Um, so the application before us seeks outline planning permission for the erection of 26 residential units following the demolition of uh, two of the existing dwellings uh, with a new vehicle access to London Road. Access, appearance, layout and scale are to be considered with landscaping reserved. And, uh, two existing uh, houses with separate accesses and parking areas and they both benefit from deep rear gardens. So uh, the site in wider context, so the site outlined in red towards the south um, is adjacent to um, the, the Not Cuts redevelopment, surrounded on three sides, including car parking, retail, um, quite fairly high density um, modern redevelopment. And the applicant has uh, highlighted several examples of uh, longer buildings redevelopment, along with um, two examples of crown roof flat buildings towards the north here, uh, using London Road. So here we have um, the existing street scenes. So at the top, um, this is the London Road. Um, uh, so you have firstly number 134, which is lately bordering, uh, lately going towards number 136. Um, you've got older development uh, to the north towards the village. Um, uh, and then you have um, a, a side profile um, of uh, the declining land level um, as you go down the site. So, can you? 
please ensure your microphones are muted, please. We're getting feedback from somebody. Thanks. Sorry, Ross. Thank you. Um, so the, the, these are some photos um, showing the, the, the similar view along London Road. Again, you get the sense of the declining land level um, and it actually increases towards uh, the Waters Way Junction. Um, most of the existing shrubbery would be removed, um, but it is rated as being low in the tree survey. And a couple of more photos. So on the left-hand side, of, this is north towards Badshot Village, um, and then more towards south towards uh, the retail development and the road junction. Sorry, it pulls. I think so. That's the one we want, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yep. thank you. Final couple of photos, um, just showing, showing the site profile. And you can see um, three of the TPO trees that are more prominent. So you've got the TPO tree at the front here, and also you've got two TPO trees towards the rear corner of the site. So here we have um, two site plans. Um, this is a comparison between the, the previous scheme, which was refused on the October 2019 committee. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the current proposal. So th uh, this, um, this demonstrates uh, the changes uh, from to overcome the reasons for refusal uh, that are listed, that summarized um, uh, on page four, section 3.4. So firstly, um, you can see that there are now uh, two separate buildings proposed as opposed to the, the 50 meter long building. And this is considered to overcome the first reason for refusal. Secondly, um, the proposed site plan now shows um, the, the works uh, to the TPO crowns that would provide usable amenity space. And uh, this is considered to overcome the second reason for refusal. Next, you have um, the reduced um, separation distance at upper floor level um, between block C at, at the rear uh, towards the Old Brook close dwellings to the north. That's considered to overcome reasons three and four. And BAT surveys have now been provided that overcome the fifth reason for refusal. Um, also to note is that the vehicular access from London Road is unchanged along with the parking provision of one space per unit. Um, the proposed, this proposed access and parking provision did not form a reason for refusal. I've got it. The proposed street scenes. Um, uh, again, facing London Road, you have Block A in the foreground and you have Block C towards the rear. Um, and then the side profile shows all three buildings, and you get the sense of how they're read as separate buildings now. And also, they utilise the declining land, li land level to be not significantly higher than the buildings at each side. And this is a comparison plan of um, the refused Block A above uh, with the two separate buildings, Block A and B. Um, the amended layout and reduced depth um, is considered sufficient to overcome the first reason for refusal. And the crown form is considered acceptable as it is of modest span and utilized to lower the building heights. For completeness, I've shown the other uh, eleva proposed elevations. And oh, apologies. This is um, block C to the rear, uh, which is slightly lower has smaller uh, gable ends and on the, um, the bottom uh, left hand side elevation you will see um, that the upper floor windows are high level and obscure glazed to remove perceived overlooking with increased separation distance. 
Here are a couple of photos of the TPO trees discussed. Um, this is on the left hand side is the TPO towards London Road. Um, and then you have the, the trees, the two trees facing south. So you get the sense of the idea of um, a, a three to four meter crown lift from the base and also uh, a, some reduction in the in in the span as well to provide a usable amenity space. And finally, uh, this is um, an indicative landscaping plan only as landscaping is a reserve matter, um, but it, it does show um, how the reduced crown spread uh, would, would facilitate that uh, communal amenity space. Um, two extra uh, ground floor flats are, will now have their own dedicated uh, private amenity space as well. Uh, so all other considerations are outlined in the report and the recommendation is to grant subject to the conditions as outlined and a legal agreement to secure the affordable housing and SAM contribution. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. <coughs> if we can get the members back. Uh, Councillor uh, White. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, first of all, um, Ross kept referring to this application as a revised application. The way it reads to me, it's a brand new application with a brand new number, therefore we can bring in other objections. If I'm wrong, I do apologise. Uh, but I believe that the changes contained in the new proposal have no significant effect on its acceptability. It's still over development of the site with an adequate parking for the needs to the proposed development. As previously stated and observed at an earlier site visit, it is a dangerous and unacceptable access onto the A30, especially so close to a very congested junction. Um, also, there's no provision in this application for adequate electric vehicle charging points. Maybe that doesn't come into outline planning. Um, we seem to be pending more on cycle racks. I'm afraid not everybody in, bi in bag shot cycles. Uh, parking for 26 cars is in inadequate as this does not provide for visitors. And the car park referred to in the papers is purely for the business park and not for resident parking. Even the residents on um, Earlswood don't use it. Um, and also, the, if the future planning application for this site goes through, they'll be very, very short on spaces. Also, with the removal of 22 trees, this leaves the site vulnerable to noise, pollution, and also gives out privacy issues, with one building overlooking properties in Albrook Close. Um, and 2.5 storey, in my opinion, is still three floors in old money. Um, it's not two and a half floors, it's three floors. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'll deal with one of your points. Condition 13 uh, refers to the uh, charging points for the um, parking places. Uh, and uh, just to be clear on the previous planning application, which was determined by this committee, that is a material planning consideration in your deliberations tonight. And you cannot ignore what was considered before. For example, no objection was raised to the access onto the highway. And so you do need to con consider those, those issues within your deliberations because we have to be consistent in that respect in our decision making. Thank you. Well, should we see what other questions? Yeah, I can. Right, we'll, we'll see what other. Uh, Councillor Tapper. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I, I, I also have concerns over the trees, um, though for a different reason to Councillor White. Um, I'd like to refer to item uh, 7.4.2, um, where it seems um, that there has been no difficulty in granting a radical uh, haircut um, to uh, the trees, uh, a 3.4 meter crown lift, uh, a reduction, crown reduction of three to four meters, where the standard uh, reduction uh, that has always been uh, approved, uh, but no more in the past, has only been a 
crown reduction of 2.5 meters. Uh, I'm wondering why uh, it appears that um, that uh, this is permission for even more radical work um, on these trees has been approved uh, when I am aware of trees which are of a similar description size uh, um, which are actually causing real damage to property which have only been approved for the removal of two branches. Uh, it does seem that expediency has won the day here. Um, I'd like uh, uh, to hear a, um, a reason why this has been approved. Thank you. Uh, and it, oh, right, Ross, do you want to come back on those two? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so um, just first, you start with the issue raised with trees. Um, the tree report uh, clarifies the size of the resultant TBO trees. So the, uh, the oak towards um, London road, road would still be at least 20 meter high after the crown works. And the red, the red oak towards the rear um, would still be at least 14 meters high. Um, so they, they still would be visible from the street scene um, and the works are put forward to firstly for, for, for good management to get rid of um, growth, growth more ground level um, and also to provide a more evenly balanced crown. Um, and then to answer some of uh, Councillor White's uh, concerns um, the, in terms of um, parking, um, the applicant's argument is that um, based, based on census figures for the area in question that the provision of one space for the size of the units proposed um, is just is justifiable, um, and the the um, the changes overall, as outlined, are considered to overcome all reasons for refusal. Um, specifically, in terms of overlooking concerns towards Oldbrook Close, um, the, the wind the upper floor windows serve landing areas, so they can be obscure glazed. Um, with openings, um, any boundary treatment um, does include a requirement for a two meter um, acoustic fence that is secured um, by condition as well. Um, and landscaping as a whole is a reserved matter, so we can make sure that the landscaping submission, if this is approved, takes into account the precise positioning of the acoustic fencing. Uh, which is a requirement under condition six, 16. Um, so officers feel that in combination with um, overcomes concerns regarding um, noise overlooking um, future pressures on, on the trees to be retained and additional planting is proposed which again can be secured through the landscaping details. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Besson. Thank you Chairman. Um, I just wish to add a point about the, uh, the cutting back of the oak trees. Um, having some very large mature oak trees in my garden that have been um, trimmed, given a haircut in the past, I think you probably have about two years before they're back to the size they are when, before you cut them. Oak trees apparently are unique in this and that they grow back very quickly. I don't think Giving them, a, giving them a haircut of two and a half, three and a half metres is going to make much difference in the years to come. Thank you, Chairman. Anybody else wants to make a comment? Councillor Wheeler. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's just really with reference to uh, the bin storage, and um, I appreciate that in the RDG it says that that walk is an acceptable walk. Um, I think 25 metres is quite a long way, um, particularly, uh, and again, I, I just query that on the basis that those people will already have had to have taken it from their flats and through the building, and presumably into a lift and then out into the street and then round the corner and into another building's um, bin storage. Um, I'm very surprised that there isn't bin storage and cycle parking in each one of the buildings. Um, and that also, I have to say, it's difficult to see the exact diameter of the bin storage that is going to be available. 
um, and whether or not that actually fits with the minimum bin storage requirements. Um, I'm sure that the officers would have checked that out already, but if I could have clarification on that, but for this number of flats, the number of bins that will be available um, is sufficient. Um, the other the other point as well is just picking back up actually on uh, Councillor Bethan's comments, and that is we're saying that there is acceptable amenity space based on the fact that we are doing those tree reductions. Um, and as has already been pointed out, trees do have a habit of growing back. Um, and therefore I'd like to understand the long-term impact of that on the amenity space. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, so firstly, um, uh, bin storage location and provision. Um, the manual for streets uh, recommends that a distance of up to um, 30 metres measured vertically is an acceptable distance uh, travel for refuse. And I have looked at the um, overall provision against um, the RDG requirement of 45 litres uh, per person. And there would be sufficient space overall within the two communal areas um, to meet the proposed uh, number of units. Um, and secondly, the, the concerns were raised regarding future growth of the trees. Um, as I said before, the, um, la the landscaping details to be agreed at with reserve matters um, could include a future um, management regime mm -hmm. um, that could cover this issue. Um, so, the, so, the, so, so that the um, management can be confirmed and a, a, a schedule in terms of applying for further consent works to those trees can be agreed upon by a tree officer. Thank you. Can we put an informative down uh, to that effect to say that we want to see that? Um, yeah, so I think we should have an informative. Sorry, Councillor Wheeler, I stopped you coming, I cut across you there. Do you want to come back in? Yeah, no, it's fine. I, just actually, it, you're saying it's 45 litres per person. How many people are we, are, are we anticipating living in a two bedroom flat? Um, so it was just to come back on, again, on the size of the bin storage. Um, and also the other thing as well, when we, when we come to planting, um, a, a concern that I have is that amenity space will end up being parked on. And we've only got to drive through um, that estate um, at the back to see just how desperate um, the parking is on, in that area. Um, and I'm quite sure that unless we're, we're very careful and prescriptive, um, that amenity space will end up becoming extra park car parking space uh, through necessity. Um, we'll come back on that one. Can, uh, Councillor Garrett. Yes, Chair, thank you. I just want a clarification. This 25 metres, is this from the front of the building or from the flat front door? Yeah, so, um, actually, the, the, the guidance in the manual streets is 30 metres, but that is a, that is a, a vertical um, dis, distance. So it doesn't, um, doesn't, for instance, count a trip down the stairs. So... Um, it is it is a guide, um, and I think we, um, on balance, that the, the, the proposed provision across two buildings is considered acceptable. Um, and in, in term in terms of the capacity, um, of the way I've worked it out is I've, I've used the average occupancy that we charge the SAM. So on that on that basis. Um, it, it would be for uh, I think for forty eight persons thereabouts, um, so that, that's how I, I think that's reasonable considering that's how we charge SAM. It's for, it's for average occupancy, not necessarily number of bedrooms. So um, so so we feel that the um, the proposed layout is is acceptable, um, and in terms of future pressure on the communal amenity space, um, I suppose the landscaping details could include um, some form of um, low low wooden restrictors along the amenity area to avoid car parking. Thank you. Um, members, can I come in? I sort of points I've been jotting down, listening, and when I was reading the papers, just picking up on that last one, I'd read, written down bollards on the green space. I personally um, question the viability. If we go to of the um, the plan on page 50, where there's that strip of green 
uh, between the flats, uh, with presumably it's block A and uh, the A30, I, I do question just what that is uh, planning to achieve and how it's going to be maintained. But more pertinently, there is a green verge, a strip of green um, alongside the estate road. Uh, and I'd be very keen to see on the landscaping plan and informative again uh, to uh, along the lines that we had some protection on that green space so it doesn't get used for car parking. Um, waste we've touched upon um, just to ensure that the the waste lorries can get in there and imagine it might be um, one of the smaller lorries. Um, parking is what is proposed, access, um, fascinating pictures of the uh, A30. Um, it's not that empty these days but uh, you know the county highways have not um, uh, commented. Change charging points we've discussed. Um, the SANG uh, can be used by occupiers of the flats, the um, just the other side of the uh, retail park car park, um, and uh, visitor parking. It's um, you have a car park at the side of it. Those are the points I've been uh, noting. None of it which um, convinces me that. Um, it's a bad scheme, it's not a great scheme, but um, it does provide um, a level of housing that is much needed in, in the area. Councillor White. Touching on the SANG, um, it is a private SANG that is paid for by the residents of Earlswood Estate. So will the residents of this new area be contributing to that SANG? There, there would be a, a SAM contribution, but and there will also be a community infrastructure levy contribution in terms of management. No, I, I don't think we can. I think mm. that ultimately it's a, it's a publicly accessible park that, that any anyone here can can visit at any time they wish. But there will be um, levies in terms of SIL and SAM um, that will cover um, general infrastructure for the borough and also. Um, management of any uh, council controlled sign, uh, uh, sign projects. Thank you. But the point you raise is, is valid and it is why we've done everything since not to have private sangs uh, on and so it's a learning curve on that one. Um, members, are there any other comments or questions you wish to make? Um, if not, we have an officer recommendation to grant. There's a couple of items that we would put on to the informative and the landscaping, um, the bollards and the, I forgot what the other one was there. The future management regime. Yes, the future management regime for the trees. Um, I certainly remember Mr. Watts telling me quite emphatically, we couldn't cut trees because they grew faster than you cut them. Um, which is uh, Councillor Tapper's point, and he knows that better than I do, I think, yes. Uh, we're on the same page there, Councillor Tapper. Um, but we have a officer recommendation. Is there a proposed and a seconder? I will propose that. Councillor Tapper propose a second. Councillor Betton, all those in favour. Now, Mr Scott will read out as is the new norm. Thank you. Um, so... Voting on uh, the officer recommendation is amended. Um, Councillor Graham Alloway. Against. Um, Councillor Peter Barnett. Against. Um, Councillor Cliff Betton. So in favour. So was it? He said in favour. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Councillor Colin Dugan. For. Uh, Councillor Sean Garrett. For. Councillor Edward Hawkins. For. Councillor David Lewis. For. Councillor Charlotte Morley. For. Councillor Robin Perry. For. Councillor Darrell Rataram. For. Councillor Morgan Rise. For. Councillor Graham Tapper. In favour. Um, Councillor Victoria Wheeler. 
against. Um, Councillor Helen Whitcroft. Against. Councillor Valerie White. Against. Uh, that mo motion is car carried 10 votes to five. Um, thank you for that, members. That's just the end of this section. But before we go away, um, our next uh, meeting is the 13th of August. Uh, glance quickly to write. I have in my diary a deep cut viability training on the 6th of August. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. So 6th of August to be advised or confirmed and the next meeting on the 13th of August. Um, and so thank you, members of the public. We will be coming out of the public session. Uh, and and then, on to some planning training. Yes, then we're going on to planning training, the reason we have some planning training, uh, which will start in uh, 12 minutes time. But if members like to stay on, um, whatever, um, and then we'll start that at quarter to, uh, to seven. So thank you very much, members. Just to confirm, members, you don't need to leave the call and come back in. We're using the same call. Okay, I'm just going to stop the live streaming. We are still live.